Hi there, welcome to BI Consulting Pro and welcome to another episode of Get Started with Microsoft Fabric. My name is Ajay Kumar and if you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe this channel and hit the notification button for all the latest updates and videos. In this episode, we are gonna talk about how to ingest data with data flows Gen 2 in Microsoft Fabric. I'm sure you have so many questions about what is Dataflows Gen 2 and how it is different from the Dataflows Gen 1 or Dataflows Legacy. Well, Dataflows Gen 2 is present in Microsoft Fabric and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can utilize it to perform your ETL or ELT operations and also how to load the data into your Fabric Lake House. We are going to start getting data from a CSV file, then we are going to use Dataflow Gen 2 and data pipelines, then we are going to load the data into our Lake House. Now let's talk about what is Microsoft Fabric's Data Flows Gen 2. Microsoft Fabric is a tool for data work, including gathering, changing, and analyzing of the data. You can perform your all the data analytics related needs using Microsoft Fabric, where you get the different experiences. If you are watching this video for the very first time, please don't forget to watch the other videos in this series so that you would get to you know how to actually start working with Microsoft Fabric, how you can initiate or enable your trial version of Microsoft Fabric, what are the prerequisites and from where you can start accessing this one. Please do remember that a key part of this process is bringing in data. That means how you are gathering your data from your different data sources. Dataflows Gen 2 is going to help you with this by taking data from various places or various sources, then making it consistent and clean. And then at last we are going to put it somewhere, which is going to be our data lake house. You can think of it as a funnel. As in the funnel, you can pour your water or any kinds of liquid and then it's gonna get down at some bottle. Then we are going to collect it inside some bottle. You pour different kinds of liquid over here. Liquid is referring to the data into the top. The funnel clean and mixes them. Then you are gonna get a useful drink at the bottom. So that is what is Microsoft Fabric. Now let's talk about a real life example. For example, you are working in a retail store which has the branches all over the world. Now you have the different data silos or different data sources from the different stores from all over the world. Now your job is to collect those data from the different data sources, process them. That can be including your cleaning of the data, removing some unnecessary data, or maybe performing some of the other transformations on that data. And finally load it into your own data warehouse or database from where you are going to start utilizing it for different analytical needs. That can be for data science, that can be for your reporting purpose, or it may be just for the data analysis purpose. So that is one real life example. Now let's talk about how does data flows work. Please do remember that data flows is a tool in Microsoft Fabric, which is also a part of the Power BI Premium. So data flows are basically going to help you to collect the data and to process it, like to perform the ETL operation on the data. Data flows is like a cloud based tool for data transformation. If you are simply working with Microsoft Power BI, then this can be a very useful tool to replace the views that you create in the databases. However, it is much more than that over here. You can pull data, change it in various ways, and then put it in somewhere else. There is a visual interface as well, which is also known as Power Query Online, where without doing any of the coding, you can simply drag and drop and can perform the various data transformations over there. I'm going to show you in a bit over there during our demo exercise. Now, once your data is ready, you can put it in a new table, use it in another data processes or data analyst use it directly. That means now your data is ready. You can perform your various data analytics needs on that data. Now, what you can do using data flows? Well, guys, if you are new in this field in data analysis or maybe in Microsoft Fabric or maybe in Power BI, then you should know that traditionally data work involves a lot of manual tasks. Over here, Dataflows aims to simplify this work for you. You can use a data process called a data pipeline, which I have already explained in our last video, that you can use to copy and use your data. But with Dataflows, you can even prepare the data first, making the whole process even smoother. And then you can use your data pipeline just to load the data at some place. Dataflows stores all the steps it takes to change the data. That means the transformation of the data. So if you want to use the data elsewhere, you just plug in Dataflows and it does the rest. Now, after discussing what you can do using Dataflows, it's time to get to know about the benefits of the Dataflows. First of all, it's going to make your data consistent. Secondly, it helps non-experts access specific data easily. It's also going to speed up the process by reusing the data. 
When it comes to the simplicity, it's going to simplify the complex data sources for analysts. If you want to make sure that your data is high in quality and it's clean, then also you can use the data flows. Lastly, it's going to make data integration easy with a simple interface where you don't need to use any kind of coding languages and still you can perform your complete ETL operation over there. However, apart from having these benefits, we have some limitations as well. First of all, please do note that it's not a replacement of a full data storage system or a full data warehouse that you can have in any enterprise organization. Secondly, it doesn't support role-level security yet. And last but not least, it's going to require a Power BI premium capacities or fabric capacities. So these are the three main limitations for the data flows. Now we are going to have a demo where I'm going to show you how you can load the data using Dataflows Gen 2 and what kind of transformations you can do over there. So let's head over to my Microsoft Power BI portal, or you can also directly switch to fabric portal. As you can see that I'm on my Microsoft service portal over here. From here, I can go to the data engineering experiences. If you haven't enabled your fabric trial, please do that. You're right now you can see that I have 59 days left over here. Now, first of all, we have to create a lake house. So I'm simply going to click over here and going to give it a name. So I have given it a some random name, but you can give it any meaningful name that you would like to do. Now click on this create button. Here on your screen, you can simply see that you have various options. Last time we discussed the new data pipeline and previously we have also discussed this open notebook. Now we are going to discuss about this new data flow gen 2. So please click on this. Here you would find similar experience as Power Query Online. And this is the same experience you also get when you transform the data using Power BI Desktop app or even when you are working into your Power BI applications. Or you can also get the same experience when you are going to work with Power Query in Microsoft Excel. Now we have to get the data first of all. So we are going to get over here, get data, text file. Now over here, either you can upload your file, you can browse from OneDrive or you can directly use a link. So I'm going to use a link which is provided by Microsoft. I'm also going to provide you this link in the description section if you would like to use it. And then you can start working on it. Now I'm going to simply create next. If you're working on Power BI, this is nothing new. It's a very simple way to get the data from any text or CSV file. Over here, this is my CSV file. You can see your data over here. If you would like to adjust something or if you would like to create the table using example, you can do it. However, we don't need to do it over here. So I'm going to click on this create button. Over here, you are going to get the different panes over here. First of all, you have this queries pane where you would find this queries over here. Our query name is orders over here and you can see the name over here too. Then you have this ribbon pane where you would find the different transformation options that you can use it. We have this query settings as well where you would see all the applied steps. And if you would like to see the visual way that how your data is transforming, then you can also enable it from here, which is the diagram view. So you can simply click over here and you would see everything. Please do remember that if you are new to Power Query, then we have already created one complete tutorial for Power Query. I'm going to provide you a link in the description section. So please don't forget to check it out. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to transform some of the data. That means I'm going to add one column over here, which is going to be my month number. So let me just give it a name, month number. And here I'm going to use some of my M functions. So if you're new to this Power Query, once again, you can simply click on this and you will get to know all the M functions. So I'm going to use date.month, which is going to give me basically my month number. And here I can just double click on this order date and click on OK. So now you can see that it's giving me all the month numbers in this column, which is appearing correctly as per the order date. Also over here, you can make sure that the data type of each columns are the correct one. If you think it's just showing any or you would like to change this, so please do change over here. Now, after that, I'm simply coming over here and I'm going to publish it. However, if you want to make some other changes, you can do that too. So I'm going to just click on publish. By default, it's coming into my, my workspace. We can go back over here and we can check that it's loading the data over here. And here it's going to show my tables. All right. It's not going to show me my table over here yet because I haven't loaded the data into my data warehouse. So I have to load that too. And how we can do that? Well, guys, for that, you have two options. First, you can go to your data flow and there you can start clicking on the load into your data warehouse. So let me just go to my data flow that we have created. And now I'm going to try to rename it. 
So let's go back. If you would like to rename it, you can rename it over here and where you have to rename, where you have to rename orders. Or I can also say df underscore orders. That's how you can rename your data flows. Now, if you will see that it has not been published yet. And we also have this option, add data to destination. So first of all, we have to publish it now. And let's see if it can load the data. So you can see that it's loading the data over here. This is my data flow by the name df underscore orders. Now I'm gonna go inside it once again and where I'm gonna say, okay, edit. But you can also explore the other options over here if you would like to. So I'm gonna go to edit. Let's click on this. All right, over here you can see that it's not enabled. Why? The reason is because it's already into our data lake house. When I created our data lake house, I already created this inside that one. And you can see that over here. So here you would find this option at the bottom right hand side of the screen that the data lake house resemble for this one is data flows gen2 underscore destin underscore something something. So this is where it's gonna go. But if you would like to change it, you can change it over here. So you can simply click on this button over here. You can either create a new connection or the lake house one, which we already have, then go to the next one. It will take some time. And here you can select where you would like to add it. So I have the different data lake houses, basically the workspaces that I have, it's showing me. But inside them, you can add it over here. So I'm gonna simply select my fabric one and I can give it a name, which is already here, orders, and let's say orders underscore name. Over here, I just need to select my fabric lake house where I would like to load my data. So I'm gonna select over here, this adventure works and click on next. Now, over here you will see that month number is not selecting by default because it's not able to get the right data type. So over here you can go and you can select this whole number. Also note that how you would like to update, whether you would like to just append it or you want to use the replace functionality, please make sure I'm just saying, okay, append it. Then we can use the append method over here. If you don't know what is append, what is replace, please do let me know in the comment section and then save these settings. And then save settings. All right, our work is done over here. Now we can simply publish it. And it's going to get published soon. Over here, you can see that df underscore orders, it's processing. So just wait for a couple of minutes over here. Now it's done. You can see the timing as well. It's refreshing here. Let me try to refresh the page. Here you can see that it has been refreshed at 9.26 p.m. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to create a pipeline. So let me again go into my data engineering workspace. Here I can create a new pipeline. And inside the pipeline also you can use your data flows. So I'm gonna give it a name, data flows gen2 underscore pipeline. And why I'm doing that? Well guys, as I have showed you in my last video that how you can use the pipeline to transform your data, to add into the different tables or append or delete. But sometimes when you create your data flows and then you can directly use that data flow into your pipeline. That's gonna make your process much smoother, which we are gonna do over here. Now, simply you have to click on this data flow button here you would get your data flow. You can rename it if you would like to. Otherwise, simply come over here under the settings pane, refresh this button. And now you can select your data flow, which is my df underscore orders. That's all you need to do over here. Once it's done, it's ready to run and you can simply click on this run button. Save and run and it's gonna run for you. Now you can see that it's running and you can see your output over here, which is in queue now. Let me refresh it. And now you can see that from the queue, it's in progress. Over here, you can check its then start date time, its duration, what is its activity ID, and you can also export these details into your CSV for your further analysis purpose. And over here, you can see that it has been run successfully. Also, you can get the same message over here. So guys, in this video, we have learned how to ingest data with Dataflows Gen2 in Microsoft Fabric, where we first created one lake house in Fabric, then we created one data flows gen2 where we get the data from one online file which is a csv file name orders then we added one extra column into that file and then we loaded and published this data flow later on we also load the data as a destination to our lake house 
and then we created one pipeline which you can see over here in the pipeline we use the data flows so that's all you need to know for this video i'm going to see you in the next video once again guys if you need any of the microsoft or power bi training please don't forget to connect with us also don't forget to subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest videos and updates see you in the next video